<clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10 says, finally, my brethren. Why? Because he's toward the end now. And he says, finally, my brethren. Now notice, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, notice this. He said, finally, brethren. He said, I've, I've told you all these other things. And finally, I'm telling you this. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, there's three words here I want you to focus on. The word strong, power, and might. All three of these have to do with a strength or a power. And, and they're all different words. And he says here, be strong in the Lord. And in the, now, notice this. You are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What does that tell you? Not in the power of your might. Now, this is called the exchanged life. In other words, you, Jesus came to become what we were so we could become what he is. And so he took on our failings, our weaknesses, so that we can take on his strength. But we still have to lay our, our weaknesses aside because your biggest weakness is that you think you're strong. And so whenever you think, well, I can handle this, I can do this, I do, no, then you say, no, no, no. Now you're relying on your own strength. But if you go from the idea of, you know what, I'm strong because he's strong and it's his strength that I'm strong in. And you say, you know, I know in and of myself, just like Peter said at, uh, in Acts chapter 3. He said, why do you look at us as though by our own strength, our own power, our holiness, we have made this man walk. No, no, no. It was the name of Jesus and faith in that name. What's he doing? He was leaning on the strength. But then he noticed, he said, what I have, I give you. So he knew he had something. What did he have? The one thing Jesus told him. He said, you shall receive power, a miraculous ability, dunamis, Acts 1.8. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And so he said, all Peter was saying was, listen, I believe what Jesus said. The Holy Ghost came upon me. I have miraculous power. What I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So what was he doing? He was relying on the strength that God gave, not on his own strength. Amen? Amen? Now think about that. If you rely on your own strength, your strength will give out at some point and you will fail you. But if you rely on his strength, it is never ending and you will never get to the end of it. And no matter what's going on, if you need more strength, he's got it. There is, it's never ending. It's, you, you cannot go to the depth of his strength or his power. Amen? Amen. Now, notice here, that word strong there, where it says, be strong in the Lord. That word strong is a Greek word. It's number 1743, Strong's Concordance. And it is the Greek word endunamo, where we get the word dunamis. It is an extension of that word, to endunamo. And it literally means to empower. Okay? And so he's saying, be strong, to be empowered by that strength of the Lord. And it means to be, to enable, to increase in strength, or to be or make strong. Now, that second word there is the word power. It says, in the, and in the power of his might. And that word power is a different word power. It's the word kratos. Now, here we're in Ephesians 6, and we're talking about spiritual warfare. And this word kratos is really, it's, it's a neat word when you look at it. And it literally means to have great vigor, to have strength and life, to have literally or figuratively, to, to, exer to have and exercise dominion, might and strength. In other words, you got it all. In other words, he, all of that is in the power, in that strength, in that dominion, in that might, in the Lord. So you are strong, you are empowered, you're endued with a power that has no limits and now listen, and cannot be resisted except by a higher power and a higher power, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, that's the only higher powers <clears throat> and they're the ones, and they're, they're the only ones that can overpower or resist the power you have because the power you have is theirs and they will not resist it. So what does that mean? That means the devil can't resist it. Why? Because he is an inferior and he has less than you do. Amen? Amen. Now notice this. And that word kratos, <clears throat> we'll come back to it here in just a minute. <clears throat> but <clears throat> that word might is the next word. And it's the word uh, 2479, and it's the word iskus, and it means force, okay? <clears throat> it means forcefulness, or having the ability to be forceful. It means ability, it means might, power, and strength. So you're going to see all these are different words.
for power or might or strength, but it's a different application, okay? If you talk about the power, okay, we're talking about warfare. If you talk about the power of a punch, there is so much power in a punch. Or you talk about the power of a rifle. Now, that's a, it's, it's power. I could say that punch has power. I could say that rifle has power. How many of you know one power is greater than the other power? Well, so that's what he's trying to get across. There are levels of power. There are differences of power. And he's saying, but notice, all of these powers are in God. He's got it all. Right. Amen? And the enemy cannot resist. Boy, if you get a hold of this, I'm telling you, it will change your life. You will realize that all you have to do is stand and move forward and stand. And the illustration here that Paul is using, you have to remember, Paul was held captive by the Roman army. And the Romans ruled the world for about 1,000 years, 800 to 1,000 years. And, so, and they did it because, mainly because of the discipline that they had in warfare and their tactics. And one of their tactics was that their shields were made so that they actually linked together. So when they got next to a person, they would actually link their shields so it became a wall. So now they didn't just have the individual shields, they had the strength of everybody behind those shields. And when I was in, um, when I was in the Air Force, I was security police. And so part of our, oh, I was a law enforcement specialist. And so part of our training was riot control. And in riot control, they gave us the shields and they gave us the helmets and they gave us the batons and all that kind of stuff. And so we had to train as a unit because if they can separate you, then they can get behind your shield and they can get to you. And if you're holding a shield, then one of your hands at least is tied up. And so we had to train with a shield and then we had to train with the uh, baton. <clears throat> and the baton, the, and the way we trained, I found out later, was exactly, or let me say, the way we trained to move was exactly the way that the Roman army moved. What that means is we would try to link our shields together, but if we didn't have shields, all we had was our batons. So when we pulled the batons, then we had to hold them crosswise in our hands, and they were about this long. And so we would go shoulder to shoulder so that the ends of our batons would override each other, you know, lay over each other. And so we, would, we all had to have our elbows into our sides. Our batons were in front of us at level. And all of our, whoever was in our unit, would all be together. And then upon command, we would start to move. You take a step. All we did was move. We'd step, stop. Step, stop. We moved as a unit. And, and it didn't matter who was in front of us. The power of the unit forced them back. Now, we didn't just do this. Why? Because there's no strength in that. You take ground. You, you solidify the ground. You, in other words, you've taken it. Now, you reset, you do it again. You reset, you do it again. You gain strength, and every time you move forward, you push them back. Now, preferably, you are pushing them and not hitting them, because the minute you broke formation to strike, now you created an opening and you weakened the unit. This is exactly how the Roman army moved forward. They would link their shields and they would take a step and stop. Now that was also psychological because their boots made certain sounds. And when they move as one, you hear the sounds of that one. And it was boom, 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 boom. And you hear the, the Hobnail boots, as they used to say, on the bottom, you could hear it. Whenever, every time they would move, they would hear that, and it created a psychological effect in their enemy. This is what Paul is referring to when he talks about resist. And then he says to stand. So you resist, stand. Resist, stand. And so now standing isn't taking the onslaught and just bracing. That's defensive. Defense never wins. Remember that. Offense wins. So whenever you're thinking to move and stand, it's offensive, not defensive. Do you get that? How many of you right now, you, you, your perception is changing on how to resist? <laughs> Amen? Why? It's an offensive movement. It is, listen, God is not defensive, okay? <laughs> Think about it. 
when, and he, he puts his armor on you. Even the armor, because he talked about the weapons of our warfare, he classified armor as a weapon, not, not just the sword. The helmet was a weapon. The breastplate was a weapon. Every aspect was a weapon to be used offensively. The breastplate of righteousness is a weapon to be used offensively against the enemy. How can I beat you, Satan? Because I'm righteous with the righteousness of Christ. And my righteousness is not my own. What does that mean? Devil, I just, I just stopped you from saying I'm not worthy. See, it's offensive. 